Welcome to the first edition of Parent Quick Smarts for 5th grade. This episode will cover Grade 5, Unit 1, Place Value, Multiplication, and Expressions. Back when you were in school, you probably just memorized the traditional algorithm for multiplication by one and two digit factors. Lessons involved rote memorization of a step-by-step -step procedure that you had to follow on row after row of problems on a worksheet. Your child in fifth grade will explore patterns in the base 10 system and properties of mathematics to identify strategies that more efficiently find products. In this unit, fifth graders will begin by exploring patterns in place value to recognize how each place is 10 times greater than the value to its right and one tenth of the value to its left. For example, 300 multiplied by 10 would be three thousands. 300 divided by 10 would be three tens or 30. Students will use different strategies for estimation of products and quickly generate a benchmark to compare with their answer to determine its reasonability. They will also explore using the distributive property of multiplication and division in order to make multi-digit multiplication problems simpler. By the end of this unit, the students will be able to use multiplication and division to evaluate expressions with multiple operations using the order of operations. Students should also be able to use mathematical expressions to accurately describe real world situations. All good lessons begin with a challenging problem. Your child's class may begin their study of multiplication by exploring the following real world scenario. Their teacher may ask that they begin by determining a, determining a reasonable estimate of their solution. Some students may ask why they need to estimate prior to solving the problem. The benefit to estimation before multiplying is that it quickly gives the student a benchmark that is reasonably close to the exact product. Using front-end estimation, such as 300 times 3 is 900, is quicker but less, than, but less precise than rounding to a benchmark such as 325, which is more precise but may take a bit longer. Students can discuss that while both strategies lead to a reasonable estimate, each has its own benefits. So either estimate will work as a benchmark to compare their solution to. In solving this problem, the students may be challenged by their teacher to model their solution using an area model and explain how this strategy may make the problem simpler to solve. By having a firm understanding of the pattern of powers of 10 within place value, the student should be able to see that three groups of one are three ones. Three groups of two tens is six tens or 60. And three groups of three hundreds would be nine hundreds, which would give you nine hundred $63 as the solution. Students should then be able to relate this model to their understanding of how the traditional algorithm works. Your child will experiment with using the distributive property of multiplication to make division problems easier. For example, the teacher may ask the student to take a problem such as 90 divided into groups of 6 and then explain how they could split it into simpler problems to solve. If they break apart the dividend 90 into 10 groups of 6, which they can easily solve as 60 using what they have learned about base 10 patterns, that leaves you with 30, which is 5 groups of 6. 10 groups and 5 groups would be 15 total groups of 6 in 90. Students should also be able to use the distributive property of division to describe this problem. They are still splitting 90 into 60 and 30, but by using division, they are splitting each into groups of six using division instead of finding multiples of six using multiplication. By the end of this unit, your fifth grader will be evaluating or finding the value of expressions that could include several operations. They will need to understand the order of operations to correctly evaluate these expressions. It is important that they first understand that parentheses, brackets, and braces are used for emphasis or clarification and must be evaluated first. Next, multiplication and division, which are inverse or opposites, 
are evaluated from left to right as they occur in the expression. And finally, addition and subtraction will be evaluated in the order in which they occur from left to right within the expression. The order for braces, brackets, and parentheses are just that. They are evaluated braces, then brackets, then parentheses. For example, in the problem above, we would, have first, we would first evaluate the braces. Within the braces, there are two sets of brackets. We would evaluate the brackets from left to right. Within the first bracket, there's a set of parentheses. We evaluate that parentheses and then finish evaluating that bracket. Once that bracket has been evaluated, we can move on to the next bracket from left to right. There is a set of parentheses. We would evaluate that first, then finish evaluating the bracket. Now we can evaluate what was within the braces. This would leave us with 35 divided into groups of 5, which would give us 7. Teachers will have students use this mathematical language to create an expression that accurately describes real-world real problem scenarios as well, such as Doug went fishing for three days. Each day, he put $15 in his pocket. At the end of each day, he had $5 left. How much money did Doug spend by the end of the trip? In this problem, students will need to make meaning of what is happening in the scenario to describe it accurately with an expression. They need to determine how much Doug has spent each day before we can multiply that amount by three days. So we need to group $15 minus $5 in parentheses to make sure that that part of the expression is clarified before multiplying it by three days. Students should be able to identify and explain why the first expression does not accurately describe the scenario. Below are examples of questions that students may be asked to solve as they progress through this unit in their GoMath text. Here are some examples of great questions that you could ask your fifth grade child as they progress through this unit. Why is estimation important when multiplying? Explain how you determined your estimate. How could you use the distributive property to solve a multiplication problem mentally? Explain how you could use an expression to describe a real world situation. Thank you for joining us today on Parent Quick Smarts. Remember, the best way to support your child's education is to keep in communication with your child's teacher. Until next time, take a look at these websites, thinkcentral.com and elementarymath.mysdhc.org. See you next episode.